Greetings, doll fans. Welcome back to the next episode of Rockin' Alpaca Wigs. We are coming along quite well. So, we have a wig cap made, right? We have scissors. We have a comb. We have glue. We have a cup of water. We have some needles. I'll get to those. We have a paintbrush. And then we have a hair straightener. And we have some alpaca hair that we have washed and combed and picked the grass out of and it should be ready to go. Uh, if you had been following along with my instructions then this is what you should have. This is our alpaca hair dispenser. Um, I recommend, yes, getting all of these items and then some if you can think of anything else that might be useful. Uh, as for the needle, the needle is very important. We're going to be sewing it in. And you know what? I don't want that to discourage you if you don't know how to sew. I want you to just take my advice and do this because I think it's really cool and it really works for me. Of course, it may not work for everybody, but but hey, who knows? Okay, so what I'm using is called the One Second Needle. This was an As Seen on TV item that came on like 10 years ago or something like that. Um, but I think I've seen needles just like these in the store as they have become standard. Uh, so just look very carefully. I'm going to zoom in on this. You'll see what it looks like. Can you see that? It's open on the side. It's got some sort of weird little pattern in here. I'm going to show you how to thread it. So you take your alpaca hair. And I recommend starting, here's your wig cap, start at the bottom, the back of the neck, basically. Bottom of the wig cap. Let's pretend like this is our longest strand that we have. This goes back to the last episode of this series in which I talk about using your longest alpaca hair for the back center of the wig cap. Right there. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make it hang longer. You'll be getting the most out of your length. So here we go. What you want to do is pinch some up, separate it, and uh, after brushing and conditioning and everything this should be fairly easy. You might get a little bit of uh, tangle, but it happens. Pick some up and uh, I would say to pick out enough that it makes the the width of a standard strand of sewing thread. That's So that's going to be pretty thin. And the thing about alpaca hair is that it's not uniform. It tapers out. You got long strands and short strands. It's kind of woo, fluffy and light and kind of all over the place. So here we, we pinch it up like that and we cut it off with our scissors. Just like that. Just cut it right there at the base as close to the base as you can get. And now we have this. And now what I would do is I, I slick it like off the top like that and that gets rid of some of this little uh, hair that obviously can't be used. It's way, way too short to do anything. So anyway, so next I would grab it right at the top. This is where we cut it. And maybe give it a little twist. That's, that brings it all together, makes it a nice thread. Hold it like that. Let's drag it along to, along the needle toward the back and it catches right in the little groove. And then you just kind of pull it like that until you can see that it's hanging right at the inside of the eye. I will show an illustration of what this looks like uh, supersized. Here it is. And now we are left with this threaded needle and leave it threaded just like this with this much hanging off. Now, once again, if you can't sew, that doesn't matter. I want you to try this anyway. This is a great thing. I really love this, actually. Go right into the outside of the wig cap. Right out here. We're going to go in, pull it through, look to the bottom side. That's the inside, actually and then go back in right next to where you came out. It's going to look like that. And now we're on the outside again. We pull it through. And now I would grab this uh, side of the hair with my thumb just to hold it steady 
so I can pull the hair off the needle. And then I give this long one a tug, and then we leave it like that. Um, w when we thread the needle, it creates a little f uh, fold in the hair. And that's where I like to let my hair settle in the wig cap, right where I've folded it. And, and then there we are. And now I'm going to show you once again on the actual wig cap. This is as if we're just starting out. Here we go. This, uh, I'm not demonstrating on the actual wig that I'm making. This is, this is a, uh, this is a phony wig. <laughs> I've actually been working on the wig for a long time. It's doing very well. Let's thread the needle once again. It's as simple as that. No, no pushing through an eye. It's just, you just drag it right along. And there it is, it's threaded. And then here's your wig cap. And then this is the back of the neck. All right, and then we go into the wig cap. Just pick a hole, any hole. I would just pick um, center back, especially if I'm using my longest hair. So stick it right in there. It creates a very nice sewable surface. Here's the inside. Send it right back in next to itself. So grab the hair with a thumb, pull the needle, and that's what we have. Now let's pull the long, the long strand so that it settles in the fold that we created. And there you have it. That is our first hair sewn into a wig cap. And as I was saying, this wig cap makes a very nice sewable surface because it's, it's a bunch of layered net. So, um, so you got your sewing holes right there cut out for you. And the glue is, um, helps it a lot to, for sewing. Otherwise, it wouldn't be very sewable if you, had, if you had just the raw tool. It's much better that the tool is layered and it's got glue. And, um, and it stays in there pretty well. It's not like, it's, it's pretty loose. It's not perfect. You have to be very careful. Uh, this is not a hard job, it's just a little bit of an awkward job. And it will get even more awkward when you get back here to the crown, because I always like to look inside and kind of... It's just hard to maneuver this thing around. I like to leave this. I, I don't cut off this excess yet. I like to grab it and let that be my handhold. Otherwise, uh, the wig cap can get roughed up and stretched out if because you gotta manhandle it as you do this, especially as you get to these hard areas where it's hard to see and hard to hard to maneuver your hands around. So yes, it's very awkward, uh, but with practice you'll get good at it, uh, especially once you've already made your first wig. The second wig will be a breeze. It'll be second nature to you because you will do this thousands of times. So that's what it looks like at first. And then we put a few more in and a few more in and it looks very pathetic. Uh, so don't be, ever be discouraged by what your wig looks like. Just keep going. Just keep sewing that hair in there and it will. It will look good eventually, I promise. Now, you have this strand sewn in. Now what you're going to do is I want you to sew in a few more until you have a nice little surface area. Maybe about a centimeter wide in each direction. Just get yourself a nice collection of hair sewn in and don't do too much because it, it'll get hard to handle and the hair will start falling out. Um, so until before you get to that point where it gets hard to handle, you're going to glue it and uh, use some white glue. I'm just using regular old Mod Podge and Matt. Uh, have yourself a little paintbrush like this one. Dip it in the glue. I'm just going to fake this. <laughs> um, and then you're just going to just brush it on right there on the inside where you've sewn in a little patch of hair and then you just let it dry for 10 or 15 minutes and then you can come back and continue sewing in more hair. Um, here's what I have now. Ta-da! As you can see after a while I start ponytailing it just to keep it in line otherwise it gets kind of uh, hard. There's a lot of hair there and I don't want to mess it up and and it gets in my way so uh, and it keeps it much, much neater to just ponytail it. And as you can see, since I put in my ponytail, I've sewn in a lot more hair. After a while, I drew a pattern on my wig cap to decide where I wanted this hair to go. And then um, for this top section and these side sections, I'm going to switch to my shorter, paler hair and some white hair thrown in here and there. So 
So I've done this. This is done up until this point when I'm pretty much done using hair like this. It, it will look very chaotic like this. <laughs> but as you continue, you're going to want to stop and you're going to want to brush it and you're going to want to iron it with a little hair flattening iron. So that's what, that's what I'm going to show you right now. So now it's time to take the ponytail out from last time. I want you to see the contrast. And see this ponytail hair is neat and beautiful underneath. It is a little bit um, stringy on the underside because I over oiled it on my first brush. So as, as you go along, you keep, you pause, you brush it, you iron it, and then it just starts looking beautiful. And you will love it. You'll be very excited to finish. Now what I have on this comb is mineral oil. You probably can't see it, but there's oil on the comb. Yes, there is. And of course, a lot of people are going to be concerned. Is the oil going to harm the doll? And I would say no. I've had a doll who's been wearing this one of these wigs for a whole year now, and he's fine. There's, there's no staining. There's no oil dirt mess on the resin. He's fine. The, the point in putting it on the comb is that this it keeps the oil to a minimum that's going on to the hair. It is possible to over oil. Um, and if you, if you really do over oil it, if it looks wet and the wetness doesn't seem to go away, then it might be a good idea to put it back in a hair shampoo bath and just wash it up a little. So this is how we um, comb. Just be very gentle. Just kind of start at the top. Let the comb lay alongside it and put some of that oil down on it. Don't force it through. This is what I do. I, I comb until it hits a resistance and then I pull out. So let just like that, flip it down when it hits resistance. Another thing I like to do, here's, here's what I like to do actually. I like to lay it alongside my arm. That gives it a nice surface to lay across. It might be a little chaotic. You might have a little hair falling out, but that's all right. Don't be worried about that. You want the bad hair to fall out. It might, it might break a little bit too, but, but don't you worry. And then see how my new hair that was messy and chaotic is starting to blend in with my old hair, which has already been oiled and brushed a few times. And uh, all of a sudden it all looks like it belongs together. See the contrast. And I have been um, paying close attention to the color of the fibers I've been using. I used dark underneath and then I, I saved my lighter hair for the top so that I get a little bit of a ombre appearance. Now it's been brushed pretty well. Maybe not perfect, but pretty well. I might continue a little bit more. And that's, that's what we have now. All right, now the next step in, in grooming this hair is to put a little heat on it. So here's my iron. It's all heated up and ready to go. Just slick it. This part might be kind of dangerous because sometimes your fingers get in the way, so I want you to be very careful. As you can see, I graze the top where it's attached with the iron without squeezing it just to make it lay down. And this, get, this gets it in good shape. It keeps it nice and calm and fresh and groomed while it waits for all of its uh, other hair to be sewn in place. All right, that is pretty good. It's uh, You might actually kind of notice that this some of the, these top strands they have split ends and that might be unfortunate for someone maybe who doesn't want their hair to look kind of frizzy. Frizzy mine obviously kind of looks broken up you know it might look kind of bad just uh, keep working with it keep putting oil in it just kind of well don't put too much oil in it um, be very careful take your time with it eventually it might start hopefully start looking good at least uh, but for, for my doll, this is actually okay. I don't mind split ends and frizziness because that's kind of his personality. That's his character. So, so I'm embracing whatever frizziness happens with this hair. 
So there it is. That's the hair for now and we are going to finish it up uh, in the next video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in all this area. This is my part right here. I drew it, but you can't even see it on the camera. Uh, so it's going to have lots of frizziness. I'm going to add some of this stuff in with it. Yeah, and this is him wearing the wig so far. I've sewn all this in. This took about three or four weeks, I think. There were some days when I worked less than other days. Uh, last Sunday, I really worked for, I, I, I focused on this wig like all day and there were several sessions in the day. So there it is. And um, so, so far, like I showed you before, I've left this, this side blank and the top is blank. And I have my part marked out right there. So what's going to happen here is that this is going to be hair that it's going to show a lot. <laughs> That's why it's blank. I'm saving my paler hair and my special hair for this area so that it will have a nice look to it, hopefully. I really don't know what it's going to look like in the end. You kind of have to just just sort of try things out and see how it turns out. Um, you might become an expert after a few tries and then you'll really know how it will turn out when you plan something out. But I'm still in that stage where I really don't know what it's going to look like. I'm still trying out things, trying out different kinds of hair, seeing what I can come up with. And I don't know what he's going to look like, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident that I'll like it, no matter what, whatever it is. And if I don't like it, then I'll probably cut the hair off that I don't like and then replace it with hair I do like. So there's always a, um, an out <laughs> if you don't like what you've done. You can always just sort of change your mind a little bit. It's okay to cut some off and replace it. I will get started picking some different colors or something. I, I have paler alpaca hair that I will also use, aside from this Lincoln long wool right here. And I will get back to you in the next video with what I've done, what I do here, and then we will finish it up and uh, make it nice and complete. Okay, I just want to show you my wig progress now. This is What's going on, we have one little bald spot right here, and uh, on the sides we've come to the edge of the thread. Now what I plan to do is actually go beyond the thread a little bit because I want to hide it. Because um, obviously it sticks out and I don't like the way it looks, so, so we're just going to cover it up and, and just add some more hair there. and uh, It's just kind of a, this, it's just filling in from here. Uh, I also want you to know that in this area, I'm going to try to make the hair as thick as possible. This is where it'll the part will definitely be seen really well. And uh, if the hair isn't thick enough, then we'll see straight down to the wig cap and it might look ugly. So in order for it to look nice and full, like, a, like real hair, you just got to add as much as possible and you might have to keep on going back and putting more in. That's what I had to do for my blue wig uh, in order to get those nice like cowlicks hanging off the front. You need to add more hair to the front. Oftentimes when, when working here it's going to take a lot of stress. It's going to be manhandled a lot and the, the wig cap might crack right here. That's not a big deal. Uh, it's real easy to fix and I'll show you how. Even if mine doesn't crack I'll still uh, try to show you how. So I just want to I'm just going to do a few rounds just so you can watch me do it some more. Just grab your hair. I'm using my palest ones right now. I got one that's um, kind of almost brown and one that's white, but they're both very pale. And I kind of use both of them just because I don't have a whole lot of white. I'm kind of mixing them together so that it looks nice and pale, but I don't have to like run out of white in one area and then not have enough to follow through with the rest of the wig. So I'm just going to run through this a time or two more. You'll see it happening in real time. And then I'll glue it and I'll actually let you see me glue it. Even though it's such a simple thing, simple concept to glue it. Alright, now I'm just going to pick a spot where, anywhere really, right at the edge, right at the edge of the forest. <laughs> uh, stick it through there, go to the inside of the wig cap. And then I turn it under so that I can look right into it. 
I can't just go by feel. I, ha I have to look. Some people might be able to just go by feel and make the needle come out in a good place. Now we're going to pull it so that it, the crease settles in the in the wig cap holes. And there it is. And I've just uh, recently re-ponytailed it, so now we're going to have this one hanging out and we'll be able to see how many we did today. So that's always fun. See how you, you can see how far you got without having to make like a photo log or something. I started this wig in early July, I think, and it is now August 10th. As you can see, I'm still working on the wig. It is a very long process, but you just have to devote yourself to it and just make it part of your routine every day. Just do at least one session of of hair sewing and gluing. And eventually you'll get there, I promise. You just have to be a person who's determined and disciplined and just keep working and yes, it will come together, it will be a wig. And I think you'll be very pleased with the results. I think it's very, very well worth it to do this, um, even if you don't like the process. See, I like to pass the time this way. I think it's fun to just sit here and sew. <laughs> So, um, and also I think this is like, this is a really great way to really, really uh, customize your doll and really personalize it. I feel like when, when doing this, we're not just making a doll, we're making a little person. After making like my first alpaca wig, I feel like it is no longer enough to just go buy a synthetic wig. Now sometimes I do. I did it for my latest doll because he just looks so good in um, Liska's wig that I bought him a, an identical one. Um, but that doesn't mean I won't eventually go and make him his own alpaca wig or angora wig or something. This is the most satisfying way to customize a doll in my opinion is to just make everything I think uh, I feel like I'm really close to the end, but I I still have quite a ways to go. I think I'm trying to fill in a bald spot. It's like there's hair here, but this also feels really sparse and bald, and I'm trying to fill it in. I still have several several hours to go with this wig, but I feel like I'm so close. So I'm getting really determined to just keep working on it. I'm very anxious to finish this project so I can start another project. There is always a project in my house. So here it is. I've done it uh, several times. I don't know, four or five times. And I'm going to um, call it a day now. Let's uh, go ahead and glue it now. I've just got my paintbrush and my glue. I'm dipping it in, just getting a little bit. And now let's go over the little patch of area where I uh, sewn some in. And I hope you can see, it's not, it's not easy to see. And that's all it takes, just, just a little glue, just try to cover the whole area. You might forget where exactly you sewed in hair, but um, uh, if there's any doubt, just spread across a wide area just to make sure you covered the hair that um, that you sewn in today. And that's the wig so far. You, we've, I just have a little bit of stuff hanging out right there. You can see that it, it does take a while, but it, just keep at it. Just uh, make it just part of your day to just keep going back and putting a few in. <laughs> you know, then go do something else and come back, put a few more in. And after a while, you, you'll have a wig. I mean, look how far I got. It's only been a month. Look how much I did. I practically have the wig in one month. So, all right, that's it. I want you guys to have a great day and good luck and ask questions. And I'll be here doing my wig and answering your questions. I'll talk to you later. Who stole my sandwich?